So if you're like us and you start running multiple cameras in your live streaming setup, you're probably going to run into a situation where you want to put a camera somewhere where it's not convenient to put cabling to. Uh, and add into that that HDMI really struggles to work over 75 or 100 feet, you may go searching like we have for a different solution, perhaps a wireless one. And that's where we landed on this Hollyview product. Now there are several HDMI wireless extenders available on the market, um, but you're probably going to want to spend some dollars on it if you want to use it for a live stream. And the reason for that is latency. Some of the cheaper $100 products you see are really designed uh, for a, a different environment where maybe you've got like a DVD player in part of the room uh, and you want to wirelessly connect it to your TV in another part. If there is a delay, meaning um, that the video as it's leaving the source and arriving at your screen, if that's a little bit delayed on your DVD player, that's not a big deal. But if you introduce latency on your live streaming, that can be, to be a really big deal uh, because your video and your audio could be arriving uh, at your live stream controller at slightly different times. And that leads to this effect where uh, the audio is either in, in front of uh, the video and it gets out of sync, which is pretty distracting. Um, which is why you wanna go for a more expensive solution like the Hollyview because among other things, what it does is it, it gives you a really quality um, connection and also really, really limits the latency. This advertises a 0.8 millisecond legacy, which is basically almost unnoticeable, or so they claim. So why don't we take this out of the box and put it through its paces? All right, well, let's check out what the Hollyview has to offer. Now, there are actually several models of this available. This is their least expensive one, still clocking in um, at a few hundred dollars, though. And straight away, what I'm seeing is you get um, you get a separate uh, transmitter and receiver. Uh, these are uh, rather nicely made. They're uh, uh, you can see they kind of I think it's like an aluminum case on them. Uh, they do have a little screen and adjustment built into them uh, and they will also take a kind of industry standard battery pack uh, that you find on cameras and lights and all sorts of things so you can run these uh, in the field if you want um, or um, they'll take power over USB-C which of course is becoming the standard of the day. Uh, now this is the uh, receiver unit I believe yep this is the receiver um, and what's nice about it is it's got um, two different HDMI outs. So when you're receiving your HDMI signal wirelessly, um, you've got two different outputs for it. So you can run one uh, to your ATM mini or whatever you're using for live streaming. Um, and then the other one you can use to monitor, say plugging it straight into a computer screen uh, or something like that. So if you wanna split it up right here and get two different feeds from your camera, you can get it um, right out of this unit. That is a nice feature. Uh, it does have uh, this mounting clips. This is a standard issue uh, quarter inch uh, screw mount that you use on any kind of tripod. Uh, screws on there um, so you can mount it where you like that way or there is a mount on the bottom. So that's pretty clever. Here's the transmitting unit. Um, again, same good construction, same mounting options. Uh, same USB-C power. Now, the nice thing about this one, scoot that over, uh, this one is you can see you have an HDMI in and an HDMI out. So if you want to take the feed from your camera, put it on this guy to transmit somewhere else in your space, uh, and then can have that HDMI signal continue on to somewhere closer by your camera, uh, you can do that. Uh, we're actually temporarily using these with another wireless solution. So we have a, the feed coming out of our camera into this guy, and then out of here into another uh, different uh, broadcast box. Um, so that's an option. Um, again, uses the same uh, battery packs uh, that I get a pretty industry standard size. Um, has all your simple adjustments right there on it uh, and this is where you are going to mount your antennas okay well I'm gonna go ahead and mock this up in our space here and we can see how it really works with a real camera 
All right, so I got it all hooked up. I got my uh, transmitter hooked up to my camera over my HDMI connection, and then I've got the receiver hooked up to the TV. I would point out that I plugged these in and turned them on, and they just worked. They connected, they found each other. Uh, there was basically no setup on that part. Uh, by default, they're doing, I think, 1080p at 60, uh, which, which works. I think you can get in there and change settings and stuff if you want to, uh, but out of the box, it seems to just work. Now, um, the reason that these are so expensive um, is that inside the transmitter and the receiver um, are um, a, kind of a more high performance uh, chip that is doing the conversion between the wired signal and the wireless. That's where all of your latency is going to come from. It's going to come from this conversion from the wired signal to the wireless. How far apart they are from each other doesn't really matter that much uh, because the, the, the signal between them is literally running at the speed of light. So, you know, that's that's really not going to be your problem. Uh, where the distance between them is going to be in the problem coming problem is just having a good connection at all. But since it's all digital, you either kind of have a connection or you don't. Um, so as long as you have a connection, uh, you should be okay. Now, I don't actually have a formal way of testing uh, the latency of these products. Um, but if you kind of watch the screen as I move my hand in front of the camera, I mean, you can kind of see that it, it there really isn't much, if any, noticeable delay. Uh, when I was playing with it earlier, uh, there may be just the tiniest little bit um, of delay, uh, but nothing compared uh, to what you would run into with other less expensive solutions. Now, there's a couple things you can do if you really, really are concerned and want to make sure everything stays in sync. One is to make sure all of your cameras are connected using the same solutions. So if you're gonna connect some with the wireless, connect them all with the wireless. Because if there is any delay, then the delay will all be the same. Uh, and what you're gonna run into, thankfully, um, is if you have any problems with that, what you're gonna run into is the video running a little behind the audio. Uh, so, which is actually an easier fix. Most sound boards, um, and actually a lot of streaming equipment itself, uh, will allow you to put a little bit of audio delay on your audio, knowing that this can be a problem. because. The manufacturers know that the audio and the video are often rely are often arriving at that equipment separately and you may need to do some tweaking uh, to get them back in sync and if anything's going to arrive late it isn't usually the audio it's almost always the video so by adding a little bit of delay to uh, the audio you can actually go ahead and sync it up now that will work so long as all of your cameras are, are connected in the same way. So if you're gonna connect some uh, with the wirelesses, go ahead and connect all of them uh, with the wirelesses if you can. Now, what does this do? Well, it lets you have a whole lot more flexibility in your setup, lets you have a whole lot more flexibility uh, in where you go. Um, and this is one of those investments that hopefully you're gonna buy this thing and you're gonna install it and you're gonna forget about it. So yeah, it's a bit of a hit up front on the equipment cost, but you know, for something that you're just gonna use and have, not that bad. Now, some things I like about this product, um, I like it overall. Again, this is their least expensive version. They do have more expensive ones that I think have better range and things like that. Um, but on the whole, I would say this one is good. Um, a couple things I don't like. One, it only came with one power cable. Um, so it only came with one USB-C cable, so you'll have to apply your, uh, supply your own for the other. Um, it also only came with one of these uh, side mounts that give you a side mount on the thing. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a bummer. I wouldn't have mind seeing two of these. It does come with uh, an adapter that lets you uh, screw into the bottom and then gives you the flat plate to go on the shoe on top of your camera. So it does come with one of those. Um, those are pretty easy to get on Amazon too if you want more, um, but it does come with that. I think the thinking is you're going to take the transmitter and you're going to, you know, mount it on the shoe on your camera. And this is the one you're probably going to put this guy on uh, to, you know, mount it however you want to mount it. So I like that um, a lot. What else? Well, the other thing that I noticed um, was these both actually have physical switches on them. So there's a physical switch to turn them on and off, which is a really nice feature, which means you can either switch them on or off with the physical switch, 
or you can switch the power going to the box itself. You don't really want these running all of the time if you're not using them. So if you have a, if you have a PTZ camera with a physical switch and you've got this with a physical switch maybe mounted up somewhere high, um, you can connect them both to say like a power strip with a butt with a switch on it. And then you can switch power to both of them on and off without having to physically access the units. So I do like that. I'm glad they didn't include a soft, uh, soft power button. Now, one drawback I'm noticing right now, actually, as I film this on the sending unit is that the sending unit does have a small fan. Again, these are doing a lot of work, right? It takes a lot of processing power in order to do this. Um, so there is something in there working very hard. So it does have a small fan that is just a little bit audible. So you'll want to think about this if you're going to place this near, say, a microphone. So this is the sending unit. This is the, you know, so it's going to be the one closest to the camera. So if you are using a camera, say with a shotgun mic or something like that on there, you want to be careful not to put this anywhere kind of close to that so that you're not catching the audio. Now, if you're using a separate audio source, like I'm using my lav mic or something else, you're not really going to hear it, but it is there. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is there and there is something to be aware of. All right, so on the whole, I would say I'm really actually happy with this purchase. I'm really happy with the money we spent um, because really what I wanted is a solution um, that I could spend a little bit of money up front on, but then install and forget about and just use. Uh, and we haven't been using it too long, but so far it's been pretty impressive. So if you're considering something, the Holly View, um, I would say should be a strong contender in that. Costs a little bit, but it's worth it. All right, well, Thank you for joining me. Until I see you again, have a great day. Hey everybody, if you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos. Doing that really helps support this channel. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have. A lot of the content I do is based directly on the questions of the feedback you give. So keep that coming and I will keep making them. Thank you.